Hey friends, it's your boy Matt Donald here to let you know once again that I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. There you'll find bonus content for the Ritwit and Paleobites, my two podcasts, my two little podcasts that could. For the bonus Paleobites content, we're discussing pop culture featuring prehistoric animals. And this month we're talking about Dinosaur King, a video game turned anime, turned card game. It's basically Pokemon, but with dinosaurs. It's great stuff. Link is in the description for where you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a wonderful day! Roar! Growl! Snarl! Bellow! Roar! Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast about prehistoric animals that I'll probably review Neanderthal someday and get accused of racism. My name is Matthew Dahl, and each week I in a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by someone who had me try some breaded vegetables, and I really quite enjoyed them. Yes, and you just had some sushi and some potstickers. Yeah, this was a big night for me, food-wise. This food was wise. a big night. Lexi I, Ryan! Yeah, hi, that's me. <laughs> How are yeah, you? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at the reaction. Yeah, no, I liked it. I, like I said, I think I'd like... A lot more than I thought I would like. I just, I'm always nervous yeah. about it. And you like, never want to have what I refer to as order envy, where or order yeah. regret. Yeah. Where you're like, maybe I'll try that new thing. And then you try it and you don't love it as yeah. much as the thing that you normally. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, that's, I'm very, like, whenever I go somewhere, I usually always get the same oh, thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, this this sushi mm-hmm. place, I get the same thing every time pretty mm-hmm. much. But it did take me a while to work up to even eating sushi, but. But yeah, yeah, that's me, the sushi lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the question I asked you last time was if you could, if you could cook for a dinosaur, would you, what would you cook? And I'm gonna do something a little bit, a uh, bit more morbid. If you could cook a dinosaur, oh. how would you serve it? This is not that morbid because I'm one of those weirdos who, are like, <laughs> if you could try a human but it wasn't a real person, how would you have it prepared? <laughs> so I'll, I'll do one. But okay, so let's, so let's do like. Uh, I don't want to do just like one of the small ones. That's basically like cooking a chicken. So well, so I, I'm gonna have to like okay. So the diet, I'm gonna want to really let's do triceratops. Rich... Well, wait. I don't know. So how would I have it? Oh, how would I cook it? I don't, I'm not choosing the dinosaur. You're giving me the dinosaur. And yeah. I'm telling you how. Yeah, just like a, a medium size. Oh, I mean, a pretty big okay. Ish one. Well, I don't know. I don't know the flavor profile because I don't know if it ate a lot of rich food. Since it didn't eat a lot of meat, it probably wouldn't be. Okay. Well, I I, I can let you. No, no, pick no, one. no, no, no. I'm good with this. I'm um. You know, I'm going to go safe, and I'm going to braise it. Yeah. Do you like braised meat? What is had? that? So, you know, like a pulled pork sandwich when the pork just kind of falls apart, and it's not like a big oh, yeah. it's thing. Like it's, a it's like shredded. Kind of yeah, it's things that are slow cooked for a really long time, so yeah. they're very tender. Or like ribs when they kind of fall off the bone when you right. eat them. That's bra- That's pretty much braised. Okay, so that could work. And then it's, you, it, and then it's you just great put it in like meat. a sandwich or something? Or? No, I don't think I would do like a pulled pork sandwich. I would probably do like a white... A red wine tomato sauce over like polenta, which is like a rice based kind of kind of. You know, know what I would do? I would do like a big boiled egg of a long neck dinosaur. Well, you didn't say we could do eggs now. Okay, well. <laughs> you said you said how would you have the dinosaur? I, I know. So, I just I just thought of this myself. So I, just, so. <laughs> I would do it poached you or poached or, or egg? soft boiled with it where the inside is still a little runny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because these eggs were big. This could feed a family yeah. like this thing. Yeah, I had to give a pot big enough to cook it in. <laughs> well, speaking of, I, I said that I would do it like a big long neck egg. And speaking of big long necks, we're talking about a really big long neck. And for a while, we thought it was the biggest long neck. Okay. Uh, we're talking about Amphicelius, a mythical creature, basically, well, at least for a while. Okay. Why we got, it was, it's a ridiculous. Uh, okay, so it, Amphicelius means hollow on both sides, whatever that means. Probably something to do with the bones. Yeah, probably. Um uh, type it is a diplodocid sauropod. So I remember remember when I was talking about that's the one the type mm-hmm. that Littlefoot little foot, yep. yeah is. And so if you imagine his mother, like that you know long neck held horizontally, long tail also held horizontally. Okay. Like that's kind of what it is. Um, uh, size uh, we used to think it was a lot bigger than this, but currently I think it's seventy eight to eighty five feet slash twenty four to twenty six meters long, and forty to fifty tons. So let's see what's eighty feet long. Uh, a tennis court's about 60 feet, I think. So, okay. Um, All right. Let's see. It's big. To... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's big. I, I, think... I would say that to most of the dinosaurs we talk about. I That's big. I <laughs> think a train engine and then whatever the thing is behind the train engine, the thing that holds the coal, 
Both of those together are about 80 feet, I think. Okay. Yeah, I All think. Right. Don't quote me on that. That's okay. I don't... My, my train knowledge is limited, so I'm picturing it roughly. <laughs> yeah, I should get my friend Matt Seibert on here. He loves trains. He's that kind of dork. I've been to the train museum in Greeley, though. Yeah. Oh, I should have gone there. That was, that was yeah. cool. All right. But when first discovered, the original estimates were up to 200 feet slash 60 meters long and 150 tons. Well, that's that's very much longer than what you just said. Yeah, a like ton, a ton longer. Yeah, like that's um, you know, you know how football works, right? Like American football, the sports ball, um, kind of. Okay, there's a thing called a red zone, which is 20 yards from the from the field end zone, which is where you know you run and get a touchdown. Okay, I know that part, but the red zone part, I'm red zone is 20 yards in because at that point I think the, the clock can't stop or something. I don't know. But it's when, it's when you're pushed into the... When a team is pushed into the red zone, like a defending team, you're, it's like all odds are there because they could okay. throw and get... T- uh, 200 feet is... A, 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 this amphitheater, if it was that big, it could stand in the middle of a football field and have its head in one red zone and its tail in the okay. other. So... Yep. That's it's a big boy. Pretty big. Yep. Uh, diet herbivore or herbivore. I keep saying herbivore. Herbivore, as the British would say. They say herbivore. They also say they, they, well. You know how they say H. It's H. You know what I think is funny. H. Yeah, they say yeah. H. You know what I think is funny about Brit. They um, it's backwards in a lot of ways compared to us on how they use certain ver- certain vowels. Like instead of evolution, they say evolution. Evolution. But yeah. instead of zebra, they say zebra. Yeah. It's backwards. And you uh, you know what's true too? Because they say aluminium. It's spelled differently over there. Really. Yep. So I always was like, how do you say that? That that pronunciation doesn't actually phonetically make sense, and then it's spelled differently over there. I listen to a lot of Australian podcasts, and they always put emphasis on the second syllable on certain things. Like, I downloaded it. Yep. Well, what I, what, I, what I realized when I studied abroad in Wales and I came back, I didn't have an accent, but my inflection was different. So I might say something like, in America, do you want to go to the movies tomorrow? And then if I were in Wales, I might go, do you want to go to the movies tomorrow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> emphasis is different. It's weird yeah. how emphasis works. Right. Uh, uh, anyways, a time late Jurassic, 151 to 149 million years ago. Uh, location, Colorado, U.S. Hey, yeah. represent. Represent the Coloradans and get high with the rest of us. I mean, it <laughs> literally is high. Literally high up there, man. <laughs> We're a mile high. All right, described in 1878. All right. Uh, pop culture appearances. I actually used one in my final Megazoic book, uh, An Era's End, before the original estimates were disputed. So, oh, okay. So uh, I'll get to that here because it, it kind of goes into my book here. All right. So all the way back in the mid 1800s, a few back and tail vertebra, as well as a femur, were uncovered that seemed to reveal a true monster. The back vertebra, as you saw at Dinosaur Ridge, was nine feet tall. Yes, that was a um, giant. Like, like, uh, and and making scientists wonder just what kind of preposterous creature this thing could have belonged to. Like, if that vertebrate alone, just one part of the backbone, was that big. It was, yeah, it's plenty taller than me, and it. <laughs> I have one of those. I have one of those, and if I, yeah, that hurts my mind to think about. So if this vertebrate, along with the tail and femur that were nearby, they look very similar to those found in the dipl- diplodocid sauropods, which is a patasaurus, which is what Littlefoot is, as we said. Uh, a group of lightly built long necks known for their long necks, long, long tails, and relatively short torsos. And if this creature had the same proportions as other diplodocids, it would have been anywhere from 130 to 200 feet long. And it, and and even when accounting for a diplodocid's more lightly built forms in the heavier brachiosaurids or titanosaurids, which are other long neck families, uh, it would have still been the heaviest dinosaurs of all time at about 120 to 150 tons. That's, yeah. <laughs> Hefty! Yeah, like most scientists were skeptical of this gigantic size, though, due to the improbable nature of such a colossus. But... For a long time, for like over a hundred years, it was known as this mythical fossil, like depicting something beyond reality, like something we see more in fantasy and sci-fi. Right, like a monster. Like a, just this gigantic yeah. creature, like that yeah. shouldn't exist. And it's because precisely because of this that I decided to use one in my final Megazoic book uh, and made his character one of eight mighty champions. That makes sense. Yes, so these were legendary warriors built up throughout the series until they finally came into the finale because they were incapacitated before the main character had to revive them. It's a long story. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoilers, man. Oh, well, you'll, uh, you'll see how it ends up. <laughs> uh, but uh, 
Uh, I thought, hey, diplodocid sauropods are often known as the ones that could rear up on their hind legs and use their back legs and tails to make like a tripod stance. So uh, why not have one of these legendary warriors be an Amphicelius that wielded wrist-mounted retractable blades, 30 feet long a piece, that could use to puncture and throw enemies about. And Batman, man. <laughs> Basically, yeah. it's just like, just imagine this giant thing, like, just using his long long sword, stabbing a tank, and then just throwing yeah, it's it. it's a Batman dinosaur. Basically. Although it probably couldn't glide. It's probably a bit too probably big Probably couldn't glide, that. but it has the, those cool pointy blades. That's my Batman voice. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? Pointy blades! Pointy blades! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Um, so I use the absolute largest estimates uh, because my books are cool sci-fi first and foremost. So this character was 200 feet long and was an absolute beast on the battlefield, dwarfing even other long-necked dinosaurs and just overall being awesome and ridiculous. Um, so I finished this final Megazoic book in mid-December 2018 and prepared to for, for its publication with my editor and my illustrator. But then mere weeks later, in <laughs> late 2018, a new study was made by paleontologist Kenneth Carpenter that changed things up and made my book outdated right away. <laughs> what if that happens again? That's the risk with stuff. paleo well, fiction. Well, that's okay, but, you know, I, th I, and you're, I think if you were doing a mm -hmm. fact book, mm -hmm. I think a fact factual book, a non, you know, non-fiction, I think that would be a problem. Right. But this is fiction, baby. Like, right, no, exactly. Yeah. That's always the risk of doing dinosaur-related fiction. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because things outdate so quickly. And yeah, I mean, and there are aspects you have chosen to not put into your book, like the feather stuff. You, I, mean, I like, do. They sometimes do have feathers. They so, Okay. They do have feathers. So, uh, yeah. Um, the, the illustrations, the illustrations, none of the illustrations have feathers, right? One of them does. Oh, okay. Uh, the one, like, the, some of the bigger ones don't, but okay. yeah, I, I, I describe them as sometimes having feathers. Um, so basically, he proposed, Kenneth Carpenter proposed, that the giant brack vertebra was a different species than the femur and the tailbone because... Bones tend to get mixed up in the dirt, not always be in their normal bodily positions. That makes sense. And different species get mixed up all the time. Okay. Um, so, like, parts of one animal and then parts of a different dinosaur. Right. Like, right. Exactly. Okay. And then this uh, this big spine was actually in, uh, you remember this, the Rebecca family, Rebecca sword yep. family of long neck dinosaurs. Good old Becky! <laughs> and a group stockier in build and having unusually enlarged back vertebra and a proportion, for a proportionally much smaller body. So it could still have this giant back vertebra, and, but it was different. And this vertebra was put under a new genus, Mara Punisaurus, which doesn't sound nearly as cool. It has the word puny in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While the femur and tail vertebra remain classified as Amphicelius, but without the back verte gigantic back vertebra for a scale, the overall proportion of Amphicelius was greatly diminished. It was still freaking enormous at 80 to 90 feet long. Yes. But it wasn't 200 feet. Like. <laughs> yes. So... so. It wasn't that, but which is lame. But so, yeah, I was gonna say, were people like disappointed? I was personally. Community? Yeah, okay. I mean, especially since I wrote a whole book about this main character whose whole gimmick yeah. was that he was enormous. Right. Uh, but for what it's worth, though, I added the throwaway line uh, just before it got published. I was able to edit it beforehand, where it was like, "Oh, this actually guy was genetically altered to be bigger." Ah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah. So I could still keep him as that giant champion. It's just, it's still not the same, though. Like, it would have been cool if I had this gigantic creature and I could have said, you know, it might have actually been that big. Yeah. Like, that would have, but now I, it's not. So it's kind of still disappointing, but. I, I understand that, but. Because, like, know? those kind of crazy sci-fi things are cooler if there's also a little basis in reality to it. Yeah. Because, I, like. I think, there, I mean, there still is, it sounds like. Yeah, there is. It's just, like. I just think it would have been really cool if to see this giant long neck dinosaur doing all these crazy things and like that thing shouldn't exist, but maybe it did. But now I we know definitively yeah. it didn't. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. But wah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the only thing you can do with it. Just do the wah wah. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that's the risk of writing paleo fiction. Uh, you know, when things outdate, sometimes it takes a while though. Like Spinosaurus has gone through so many different updates in the last couple of years. That's that one. I always forget because. Did you see Jurassic Park three? That's the one with the spine along its back. That yes. like it almost looks like a fin. Yes. Okay. Yes, and it had a big crocodile-like uh, yes. mouth. Yes. And it had we used to think it had long legs like a T Rex. That's a meat eater. Yeah, that is oh, a yeah. meat eater. Well, mostly a fish eater, but still yeah. a meat eater. Then we found out in 2014 it had really short back legs to the point where some people even thought it might have been a quadruped. 
Oh, like water based, like or just four legged. Oh, is that what that means? Quad, well, quadra, quadruped. Quadruped makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we now know it actually still was a biped, but it just had much shorter back legs than we initially thought. And then this year they found out it had a tail fin as well, like a newt. <laughs> Newts are awesome. Haven't you yeah. seen Matilda? That's true. The power of the newt. <laughs> it freaks out the bad people. <laughs> well, I just think of like Monty Python. She turned me into a newt. She turned me into a newt. I yeah. got better. Yeah. If the newt I became, that I got turned into, was Spinosaurus, I wouldn't want to get better. That's true. <laughs> I would feel pretty good if, yeah, I was a Spinosaurus. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So now we think that it was... The Spinosaurus was almost exclusively water-based, like like not like fully aquatic, but semi-aquatic, to the point where it swam a lot. That's what I would want to be. If I yeah. I would want to be semi-aquatic. Yeah, you don't want to commit. Both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Amphicelius, like it, it, it was cool while it lasted to think, oh, maybe it was this big, and now we know it probably wasn't. But still, uh, we're at the point where we're rated at one out of sixty-five million. Um. Uh, for the previous estimate, uh, sixty-five million. <laughs> hmm. For now, probably like fifty million or forty-five million because it's still big. But there's a lot of sauropods that big. Well, now. I feel like seeing my friend disappointed has docked this one score. Oh no! But what's well, disappointed you? And yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. So it's, like, oh, well, thank you. I so I'm like. I don't know. I don't know if you deserve it. Maybe maybe I'm going to just throw a ten mil. Like, <gasps> Whoa! Take that, Amphicelius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, way to shatter the dreams of of a man who didn't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like look at it as like what wasted potential you could have been two hundred yes. feet long, but you decided instead to it's like someone who's like you could have gone to the pros. You know, up it a little bit because it is a beautiful metaphor for a lot of things in life. Where <laughs> I think it's going to be this amazing thing. Wah, wah. <laughs> so, I'll up it to twelve. We'll do a 12 All now. right, sounds good. Yeah, it's a good metaphor for life. It's full of disappointments. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it is. And you got to just keep on rolling. You got to keep on rolling. Um, I've forgotten its name. Amphicelius. Amphicelius. I feel like we didn't say it as much this Amphicelius. time. Amphicelius. Like amphibian. Like, amph- like amphibian. Yeah, okay. Amphicelius. That's easier. Okay. Yeah, so, because yeah, amphibian means both, because the, the amphi is both. That's where that both comes from. Is that what that means? Yeah, Amphi- so amphibian means both water and land. Oh, look at all the what I'm learning today. See, I this don't is know. what I'm talking about with dinosaurs and entomology. You learn all the yeah. you learn a lot of word origins Very in valuable. Greek and Latin. So yeah. uh but yeah, so all right, well that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact us at Matt D at MatthewDonCreator.com. You can follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook at Matthew Don Creator, on Twitter and Instagram I'm at Matthew Don64. Uh, Lexi here is on Lexi Tate forty four. Yes, that's me on Instagram. Instagram. Yep, check check her out. Check us out. Uh, if you're interested in writing, I have a book. Uh, no, I mixed it up. If you're interested in writing, I have a podcast <laughs> on the Ritway where two twits talk about writing. Uh, you've been on a couple episodes. I it's have good, good stuff. It's good fun. Yep, we're past hundred episodes at this point, so yay! Woo! It'll never end. <laughs> uh, eventually, eventually, it's never ending. <laughs> eventually, Matt Cyrus gonna get tired of it. He's always like. Oh, but we, we, we'll run out of topics. So I'm like, I don't know. I think A lot of people say that. I think we'll keep going for a Yeah. Bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in reading, I have a book series on Amazon Megazoic. Like I said, the final book does have an Amphicelius in it. So that's pretty cool. If it ever gets turned into a movie, can I try out to be the voice actor on the movie commercial? Oh, yeah. It's like, in a world. In a world <laughs> where dinosaurs have lasers. <laughs> <laughs> that could work. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that. And, all the, and all the sound effects. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Look at that huge laser. Oh, laser. Oh, no. That's, that's my favorite line in my book. Look at that huge laser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this week. As I say at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites, uh, I guess, wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Poor Amphicelius. It doesn't get any respect. You don't get no respect. <laughs> you don't deserve the respect. 